I looked at the use of therapy for children who've experienced trauma, either emotional trauma, psychological trauma, some form of trauma, um, and I'll define what that means in terms of this study in just a few minutes. I'll also define what is play therapy, also what it is not, and how the two are related to each other. Um, also, after looking at all the research that has been done, what needs to be done? What is the future of play therapy? More specifically, what's the future of play therapy with trauma in children? Oh, okay, that's good, that worked. So, what is play therapy? The first thing we need to understand is what play therapy is not. It is not sitting down with a child and hoping that there's some kind of therapeutic engagement through that process, because that's unrealistic and that's really not going to be helpful. That there's a lot more to working with children than just playing with them, um, especially in a therapeutic, therapeutic environment such as a um, psychiatrist or psychologist's office. They have toys and they have a background in play therapy, so they're going to know what to do with a child that's different than just sitting down and playing with a child, either your child or someone else's child. So the primary goal, especially when working with children who've experienced trauma, is to relieve internal emotional distress as well as um, help them to be able to continue normally developmentally, not necessarily their physical development, but their neurological development so that the trauma doesn't hinder any kind of um, natural development processes. Um, and it's also important to note that play therapy is not something that I just came up with so I could have a topic for this summer. It's something that's been around since the 1920s, and Freud used it as a way of interacting with children and building a therapeutic relationship with an adult and a child. Um, so it is, it's been around for a while. So there are different types of play therapy. Um, if you look at the whole field of play therapy, it can be broken down into directive versus non-directive. So in directive play therapy, the therapist facilitates the reenactment of the traumatic situations as well as they can provide certain toys and they might ask the child to maybe draw a picture of what has happened or use a dollhouse if there is some sort of domestic violence issue. So they kind of lead the child into talking about or more behaviorally reenacting what has occurred. Versus in non-directive or child-centered play therapy, the child has complete control over the, well not ultimate control, they're not running around crazy, well perhaps maybe they would, but it would more be that they can do what they need to do internally and work out their internal issues and the therapist is there to guide them and help them but the the main gist of non-directive is in the hands of the child and there's no difference be, well that there's no difference between the two types it's more that they're both equally recognized as ways of working with children. I guess it just depends on the child you're working with. So what is trauma? For the purposes of this research, I looked at single type, uh, so type one, which is a single event such as a terrorist attack, um, bereavement, natural disaster. This is really an uplifting topic, and if you've been following Twitter, my fun facts have not been so fun, I would say. Um, type 2 is a reoccurrence of sexual abuse, domestic violence, war, chronic illness. The majority of research is on type 2 trauma. Um, there's not very much on single occurrence trauma. Um, it's also important to consider in the world of psychology, we use something called the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders, and they define um, PTSD as what can result due to a traumatic event. However, the DSM's definition is based on verbal things, so verbal cues that there might be something going on, and you're not going to see a child flat out say, hey, this is what happened, this is a problem, because they not, don't ne you know, necessarily know that this is a problem, and they're not inclined to talk about it. That they're maybe more inclined to behaviorally act out something, whether it's through play or um, just be more aggressive in their behavior with other children. 
So play therapy realizes that children naturally, naturally want to play. And so we can utilize that to work and work through traumatic issues. So the current research on trauma, well, when I picked this topic, I just assumed that you could use play therapy for trauma, but I didn't realize that there are other things that you can use for children with trauma. And in fact, play therapy isn't always recognized as the best method. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy is found to be superior to play therapy. Um, in a very interesting study, 95% of psychiatrists said that they use some form of pharmacotherapy, so using uh, medicine to fix the problem. But the interesting thing is that there's absolutely no research and no backing on using medicine with children, especially who've experienced trauma. So that's a big problem, because we don't know the long-term effects of um, adding in medicine to children who are still developing. Um, so I was a little discouraged that play therapy wasn't getting enough recognition in terms of its use with trauma. So I wanted to look at, well, let's just look at play therapy in general. Is it being recognized in other, for other things if you have a child who has ADHD? The only problem with this is that these studies only look at every form of play therapy. So now I have trauma that's saying you can't use play therapy and play therapy saying you can use it for everything. So how do I connect the two topics? And um, the, the research on play therapy says that it is as effective as verbal therapy with adults or non-play therapies with children, so like CBT with children. So maybe I can't do this topic at this point, I wasn't totally sure. So when I started to look at what was available, this is the breakdown of the articles. I found one article on hopelessness and children, homelessness as a form of traumatic event, and then you can see um, which topics they had more on. The problem was that a lot of articles had play techniques but weren't saying that they were play therapy. So I can't necessarily include that if the research is being done with somebody who's using a play therapy technique but doesn't have black background in play therapy, which so it might not be as effective. Um, and also, there are a lot of gaps, considering this is what was done in the past 10 years, and there's maybe 50 articles, maybe. That's not enough, considering how prevalent trauma is and how much it affects children. And we know that play therapy and playing with children is natural. Why isn't there more? And why isn't it being considered more? So what's the future of this? Well, I attended a play therapy workshop, which at first I thought was going to be awesome because it incorporated play therapy with CBT, which was mentioned before as the best thing to work with kids with trauma. So if we combine the two, then we have the superpower that we can work with kids and fix them, which is what I thought. So for I went there and they didn't incorporate CBT at all, and they kind of talked about play therapy, and really I thought it was a little, not dumb, but it didn't use any current research. They were talking about some kind of activities, and my mentor and I discussed that some of the activities that they were even saying that you should use would actually be kind of hindering and hurtful for children. So I was a little confused, and one of the activities that we did that I did gain something out of was we got into groups and we had to think about our favorite childhood game, which I'm sure everyone in this room can do. And if you remember my five minute presentation, I asked you to think of your favorite childhood toy. And these things are very important things you need to consider because your favorite childhood game and your favorite childhood toy are going to be totally different than somebody a 10 year old now or a five year old now. So my bigger question and the future of my research also incorporates, well, where is play therapy going? Can you use the same toys with children in the 21st century that you could use 20 years ago? Especially with the influence of technology and the media and what kids even want to do and the fact that there are so many more structured activities that I spoke with somebody who is a play therapist and she said that it's hard to get children to play because they don't know how to play. They need you to teach them, which is really sad, I think. Um, so we need to think of a new approach for working with children with trauma that incorporates 
not that's not restricted to only CBT or only play therapy or only one modality that incorporates both of those things and uses that also factors in development um, but also factors in the 21st century and everything that's going on um, so although I would like to continue on with this topic for my honors thesis I think I need to tweak it to figure out well what can we even do with children? Not necessarily children who've experienced trauma, but children in general. Can we can we play with them? Or has the term playing, you know, gone to the wayside? Which again, this has been a very sad topic for me, and I feel like childhood is just disintegrating. So, um, uh, you guys should care about this though, because at some point you'll interact with the child, hopefully, or have your own kids, and you want them to be able to play. Um, so because it is so natural. So I hope you got something out of that. <laughs>